So, before doing another computer case video, I wanted to do a video about my old battery pack design. There is more to say on the computer case, but that will have to wait until my next video. The battery pack basically combines a load of lithium-ion 18650 cells to make a bigger battery for use in solar power systems. But it's not really useful anymore, since the big blue lithium-ion phosphate batteries offer a better value. Though people are still buying it, it's still useful if you need a more compact battery, but I'm going to stop selling it anyway, as it takes a long time to make. But rather than just delisting it, I decided to make a DIY version for those who still want it. This is the old design, and this is the new, simpler, more DIY friendly design. It's simpler because I got rid of the sleeve, and it's more DIY friendly because instead of having solid copper bus bars, it now has cable bus bars. I'll show you how to make them in a sec, but let me demo the product first. They're pretty quick to load up, but you have to be careful here not to put a cell in reverse. The best way to go about this is to hold the pack in one hand and use your free thumb to push the cells into position. You want to put the positive side first, as this contains a little separator that is possible to break sliding against the nickel contact. So only push with your thumb on the negative side while paying attention so that you notice if you've got a cell in reverse. If you do put a battery in reverse, the nickel contact strips will act like a little fuse to prevent a complete catastrophe. Though it's best not to do this, as you'll have to repair this burnt connection. This is one of two safety features, the other being the use of mega fuses to link the packs, which protects against shorting the main positive and negative terminals, which would also be a total disaster. So now that the pack is fully loaded, you can see if I shake it, none of the cells are flying out, as the compression or grip is strong which is what you want in a large battery pack like this. The construction is pretty simple, and the new bus bar can be produced with simple tools. The only drawback is that it takes a long time, but here's how to do it. First you cut some nickel strips from some nickel sheet, about 43mm long and 2mm wide. It doesn't have to be accurate. This is 0.1mm thickness nickel sheet, which you can cut easily with a sharp pair of scissors. This part just takes a few minutes. Then I use these tweezers to straighten and deburr them a bit. Once you've made a bunch of them, you can take a length of cable. You need it to be a bit longer than the pack to give yourself some working area. And then use the wire stripper tool a couple of times to expose a bit of wire at one end. Then we can make a mark where each nickel strip will be and use the tray as a guide for this. Once you have all the marks, you can use a small screwdriver to open up a gap in the wire. Here you can insert the nickel strip and push it up so that it gets wedged between the thick copper strands. Then you can use the wire stripper tool again to close up the gap, which compresses the wires so that it's really stuck in there. You obviously want a thick rather than a fine stranded cable for this. This is UK mains cable with seven strands. You can get them in 6mm and 10mm squared thickness. I tried to find stranded wire, and while it does make the connection, it doesn't give the confidence of being wedged in tightly. I'm using the green and yellow ground wire, just because it's available separately. You can get blue or brown in the UK, as long as you're willing to extract it from some standard mains cable. This is what that looks like. I'm just doing a bit of twisting to align the nickel strips and the colours of the wire. You may not have to do this with a single colour cable. Once that's done, we can clip the ends up, then straighten out these nickel strips. I'm just using some needle nose pliers for this. And that's a complete bus bar. It takes more than 10 minutes to do this, and you have to do two of them for each pack. It's what takes most of the time. If you could find a quicker, better way of doing this, it would be a much more viable product. Now the best way to combine the bus bars with the trays is to get all the nickel strips in parallel. You can do this just by pushing them against the table. And then somewhat awkwardly hold it at the top while guiding the nickel strips into the holes, like this. Then the next step is to use the small screwdriver to push them into these little holes. You should do a couple on each side at first, just to secure the position 
then you can go along and push the rest in. Next the end caps go on, they just click on with these little slots. I made the slots double, so you can have this mid cap that lets you stack the trays to any length you desire, though any more than two trays tall and it becomes unwieldy. I'm printing these parts in clear PETG and a 0.6mm nozzle, with the end caps just being printed as solid objects, while the tray is a bit more complex. With a whole row of these short vase mode walls, before another vase mode object is printed on top, joining them all together. It's a bit difficult to set this up in the slicer, but it avoids retractions and makes a better print. The shape of this tray evolved over time. I started out with just a simple cage and added these eyes to increase strength at the contact points where it was weakest. Then when I decided to get rid of the sleeve, I added this outer wall. It just does the bare minimum of covering the conductors, just enough to stop you sticking your finger in here, and it also helps bind everything together better. The bottom cap, or foot, has a little notch so you can click the pecs together. This helps a lot with large batteries. The top cap, or lid, has a pair of terminals made from some bolts and some crimp ring terminals which I've taken the yellow plastic off. These need to be bent over at close to 90 degrees, it's probably more like 80, and they fit a 6mm square cable which is only rated at 48 amps, though I've been using a 10mm square cable and clipping off three of the strands to make it fit. We will be dropping some solder in here which will make for a better connection than the crimp these were designed for. The bolts are friction fit, since there won't be any force trying to pull them out. You should probably get the shortest bolts they sell. These are 12mm, but they could be shorter. It's an 8mm M8 bolt, or 5 16ths for those in Freedom Land. The 5 16th bolt is slightly smaller, it's annoying that these don't line up. I made models for both versions in the files. I had to buy some Imperial bolts especially for this. Like and subscribe if you're American and appreciate the effort. You need to bend the wires in a bit to fit the lid. They go through these small holes and then put the ring lugs over the top. It may take a bit of wiggling to get them in place. Next step is to solder the connections. It takes a bunch of heat. I try to heat the cable first to make the solder stick to it before flooding the whole thing and making a permanent connection. Finally we can put the nuts on which have these plastic covers. They're a nice design. They add a bit of protection against accidental shorting of the terminals. And they are also good for connecting cables. I used them in my own solar power system to connect up my battery packs in a nice way. So the idea is to link a bunch of these packs together with the mega fuses. The terminals are spaced so they can go in either direction. And for large lithium batteries, we need to add a battery management system for safety. It uses a bunch of small connections, which we can attach using these red and blue crimp rings. I use one blue one here so that it sort of corresponds to the colour of the wire. The battery manager I'm using is made by Dali. You buy the one specific to the amount of cells you have in series. And this is what a 24 volt pack would look like. If you was to use 3000 mAh cells, it would store one and a half kilowatt hours. It doesn't really have a current rating. I advertised 40 amps for my old design, but this was a low ball figure just to be safe. In the new version, we have the choice between a 48 amp 6mm square cable or a 10mm square cable rated at 70 amps. So I would conservatively rate this at 40 to 60 amps, though I've never formally tested this on video and there's no time like the present, so I've purchased a thermal camera and put three packs in series for 12 volts with a power meter so we can see what's going on. I use the 6mm square cable for one of these packs so we can compare the difference. And for a test load, I can use my tiny 3D printed gaming PCs since they use 12 volt DC power and it lets me feature both my products in the same video. See my last two videos if you want to know more about them. I made these ring lug to XT60 connector cables to connect the PCs. Running Furmark, they only draw a combined 45 amps. I'd have to build a third PC to test any higher than this. Though these two alone are pulling down the battery by a whole volt, you'd want more batteries in parallel for a third PC. 
Through the thermal camera, we don't really see much difference in the temperature between the two cable sizes, but the pack in the middle looks a bit hotter, with the pre-wired cables to the power meter being the hottest thing here. It's rated at 150 amps, but this seems like an aspirational rating to me. The center pack uses the larger cable size. I think it's just hotter due to its proximity to the power meter. Anyway, the cable bus bars are working as expected. They get to the mid 30s after 5 minutes. This is just a quick demo with some numbers. It's not supposed to be an extreme test, so I won't push them any harder. As I said, I've decided to stop selling it as I want to make more time for new designs and videos. This is the final version. It's about as optimized as I can think. And the files will be available for free for those who want to make it for themselves. Or even sell it. No restrictions. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Or even donate. Links are in the description. Thank you for watching.